are joining me today. Um, it's my turn to create my heart cutout for the Piggy Love collab. This is the piece I have decided to name Roses for Rescue. So it's a little bit different to my regular blooming, um, but I just wanted to do something that pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, and I wanted to just work out if I could stencil my piggies on in a different way to using a gel. So I'm just going to be wanting a plain black background on my heart. Uh, I'm going to be stenciling some roses on top of this. You might have already seen the picture in um, some of the groups and on my pages. So it does require a plain black background. So I'm using the Amsterdam Expert Ivory Black, which has quickly become my favorite new black um, since I got all my Amsterdam colors. Uh, been through all the blacks and whites for cell activator as well as um, testing them out with brushes and yeah, really love this particular color. So I'm going to be um, painting the back as well, but I'll have to let this dry first um, and then I will pop it over and paint the back and then I'll get started on my roses. So I'll have a little bit more information um, towards the end of the video about the bidding and the auction. Um, you are, you're already able to bid at the moment actually. The bidding commenced when Lisa started her video at the very start. Um, mine's the last video so you've been able to bid for, for a little while now. Okay, part two. So I've decided I'm going to be doing a stencil or a few stencils with this rose. Um, as you can see, I did have a practice to see if my idea was going to work. I'm not going to be using gel today. I'm going to be using a gloss varnish spray. Um, I'm basically going to take this down. I'm going to spray the gloss varnish um, straight on top of the stencil. I'm going to wait until the black part's just sort of mostly dry, but still a little bit um, tacky. Well, not even tacky, but it's going to feel dry, but it's still going to have the varnish on there. Not 100% kind of cured and flat and really, really dry. Um, so it's going to hopefully grab the piggies when I dust them on. Now I have practiced this. It does work. Um, it's a little bit fiddly, but I just... I don't know if I want to put resin on this heart yet or not, so I really want it to be quite flat. I don't want to have the gel sticking up too much. I don't want to have to dome. I don't want to have to do a resin wall or anything like that to get above any height. So basically, I'm just going to see how I go dusting these on. Now, as long as I don't get any gloss varnish over here, my piggy shouldn't stick to, to this board. I should be able to just wipe it off if I don't have any spray in that area. So what I might do is just be a little bit more, take a little bit more precaution with my preparation. Um, and I might just cover this area here so that I don't get any kind of dusting coming out of this rose here. All right. So it's a little bit, a um, little bit more preparation and fuss than usual. But if I can get away with, I really just don't know. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to resin this or not. Whether I'm just going to use a really high gloss varnish. I just don't know. There's another surprise part of this coming up as well which is kind of why I didn't want to resin it, but we'll be seeing that a bit later. Okay, so the three colors I have chosen to dust my roses in today is Athena, Venus, and Grenache. Um, so basically the entire piece is going to be black, white and these three colours. I want to keep it really simple and 
with a lot of contrast. So, um, my daughter's gonna kill me, but I did steal her eyeshadow brush, which I find them to be the best for dusting piggies. They seem to be just really round and fluffy, a little bit like a stippling brush, but not as hard. They're quite soft um, and fluffy. And I've also got this just cheap art um, painting brush that if this one ends up getting overloaded with too much, maybe varnish stuck to it or piggies stuck to it, or if it doesn't survive the distance, because I do have a couple of roses that I have to do here. So I've got a second backup brush just in case. And she does have two more kind of different eyeshadow brushes in her makeup bag. So she's not here. Um, so I'm free to go steal the other ones if I have to as well. Okay. So I'll start in the outside. So I'll just be able to clean this off. Um, I'll be able to clean the gloss varnish off my stencil with some isopropyl alcohol um, when I'm done. It should be fine to be sprayed over a couple of times. It hasn't, doesn't really seem to do anything to it. Okay. It's just slightly, slightly tacky. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to gently um, dust my Grenache into the stencil. I'm hoping that there's not too much bleeding um, underneath the stencil. I still feel confident I'm going to be able to uh, dust off any, uh, brush off any excess uh, powder because I haven't got any varnish underneath the stencil. So I'm hoping, really hoping that at this stage that this is going to work. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but I'm really happy with the colors that I've chosen. So I have Grenache in around the outside there, and then I've decided to use Venus um, in a little bit from that. And then I'm going to finish off the middle part with Athena, because I would like my roses to have a really nice, shiny, kind of goldish heart in the middle, uh, rose in the middle. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue on doing that. And then I have a bit of a repetitive process uh, to go through until I get all my roses on. Now, there's a couple of parts here that didn't really take properly. So what I'm going to do is just pop a little bit more of my gloss spray there. I might just actually give the whole lot a bit of a seal spray. See that it's taking there. It all looks a bit odd at the moment, but I promise. Oh, I don't promise. That would be silly. I'm hoping. Okay. Okay, so my first rose is completed. I'm just going to take off my backing. I'm hoping, hoping it hasn't bled too much, but even if it has, that's okay. I can touch up. Um, can touch up the black background but you'll see later on why I don't really need to. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I've removed my stencil. Um, I gave it a bit of a wipe with some baby wipes and dried it off, ready for the next rose. Um, I took away my surrounding little paper things. Now, what I was able to do is brush off the excess pigment with a brush like this um, after it was dry. Reason being, the only parts I sprayed were actually um, through, through the stencil. So areas underneath the stencil didn't have any gloss varnish there so that the pigment can't really stick to it the way it can stick to the part that I sprayed, as you can see. So I'm definitely not too fussy about the outside here where there's a little bit of pigment that's bleeding out there. That's no drama, I can touch that up, but I don't really need to because there's something going to be going over the top of that. Um, so all I was really looking for was relatively clean lines inside here. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I'm gonna keep going with the process, put all the rest of my roses on and then we'll get um, cracking on the, the next part. If you're just joining us and you're not quite sure what this Piggy Love Collab's all about, a bunch of artists um, as well as myself were sent a wooden MDF heart by Fluid Art Co and we got to choose whatever type of art we wanted to put on it and we're going to sell them and all the proceeds are going to an amazing piggy sanctuary animal farm. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed up the process a little bit with some cool air, just to get that varnish um, to the tacky stage where I can start doing my, my dusting because I'm sick of waiting for it to, to dry on its own. So the name of the charity um, or the animal sanctuary in Australia, in New South Wales, where all the donated money is going to be uh, sent after the end of the auction. The name of the animal sanctuary is Where Pigs Fly. Uh, there's a lovely lady by the name of Debbie who runs the Facebook page and runs the sanctuary actually. She loves running around and playing with the piggies and yeah, she's got a heart of gold, this woman. So uh, probably think that they would be really appreciative if you did pop over and give Where Pigs Fly a bit of a follow on Facebook um, and keep track of, track of all the little videos of the piggies and also all the other animals that they care for there. Head over and have a look at the status of the bidding and the auction. You can find the link to the Octria site uh, down below in the description box of this video uh, and all the other artist videos as well. Which reminds me, if you haven't watched everybody else's video, you can find their links below my video as well and um, pop back through and, and catch up on all the other artists work before me. Okay, just a little tip um, when you're stenciling over an edge, when this side of the stencils falling down it literally pulls up the middle there so I just felt like supporting the stencil here um, helps keep that really flat just there okay moving on actually really really love the three different red pink and gold perfect colors for it okay let's get going on the next section okay I've got my Amsterdam expert series ivory black which is what I painted the base with Too fussy with this 
I am touching up around these little roses. Really, when I get to the end of this piece, I pretty much realised that I didn't really have to do that. Um, the crackling effect that I put over the top would have been absolutely fine on the black with a little bit of, um, you know, irregularities. Liquitex Heavy Body Titanium. Uh, bit of water. Alrighty, so now I am deciding to do something here that I don't even know why I thought I should do this because I am not a brush artist. I uh, definitely struggle with a steady hand with the paintbrush. Um, I'm having a good crack at it here, but I don't even really know if that is the type of paintbrush I should be using to get a long skinny line. I just chose the longest brush I had in my little collection there. Um, and hoped that, you know, if I load it up with paint, I'm going to get a longer line out of it than a shorter paintbrush. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just thought maybe that's how the brushing will work. Um, it's having trouble a little bit, because I've put so much kind of sealer and varnish already on these roses, it's having a little bit of trouble sticking, but I'm working out if I use a little bit less water and a bit more of the actual tube paint that the coverage is a lot better. Funny that. Um, and the reason I'm actually doing this outline is I could, I could leave this and I could do it with the crackle paint or the crackle ground, the crackle medium, whatever you want to call it. I could actually paint around the roses with the crackle medium because it is stark white itself. But the problem is I want to, you do have to work quite quickly with the crackle medium. So I didn't want to take too much time painting around the roses with the crackle because also with the crackle you shouldn't go over the same spot too many times you really can't press hard with the brush and brush the crackle right down like paint because if that little bit of crackle dries and then you go over the top of it there'll be no black behind it whatsoever and it'll still crack the same but they'll just it'll crack on top of white so the effect is really lost if you if you fiddle around too much and just go over it too many times over and over um, so I'm just making a little bit of an outline here so that when I get to the part where I'm putting the crackle paste on I can literally push it straight up over that white and I don't have to worry too much about the clean line of the white on the on the actual outside of it. Um, that wasn't very clean, but anyway. <laughs> Spilled a bit of paint here. I'm quite, going quite quickly actually. I'm surprised how fast I'm able to knock these, these um, borders out. So what I'm also noticing here is I did have a little stenciled part underneath the hole there. That was just a little bit of a trial. I thought I might fill that up with resin and then I just decided that I couldn't risk something happening there. Here I am going around the heart with the white and then I decided that just looks stupid so I wipe it off. Um, I end up pushing that little thing out and having the hole in the heart because I just didn't like the way that it looked when the heart became mostly white. It just kind of really took away from the roses so I decided to leave the hole completely plain um, thinking that if someone might hang it on a white wall, it'll really just make the roses stand out as the feature. Um, and I was a little bit nervous about filling up that, that heart hole with resin. I have got to tell you, I didn't really have a plan if it came out too much and when I spilled over the top, you know, it was going to ruin everything. So because I've chosen not to, um, not to resin this heart at this stage, I'm deciding I, I don't think I'm going to resin it. I think I'm going to go for a high gloss varnish um instead so yeah i think it worked out pretty good in the end but i'm going to be applying this crackle medium now it does go a long way that little cup there should well and truly be enough for for the inside of these roses i'm going to really load up my brush it's almost like I'm not painting the crackle on. It's like I have so much crackle medium on that brush. It's literally just falling off the brush into the areas that I want it to kind of um, fill. And it's going to spread out. It's going to spread out itself. I'm going to push it a little bit with the paintbrush and get it, get it over the top of those white borders. But really, I'm not going to go backwards and forwards with this paintbrush. If I could pour that crackle on out of that cup and feel like it was going to 
be able to be controlled still, I'd probably do it that way. It really, you can pour it on and tilt your substrate around until it covers all the edges, which is a really good, fast way to use the crackle. Um, I definitely feel like when I get a bit more practice with this product, I will do a live on it so that I can give you guys all of the tips and tricks that I've learned since using it. It is a little bit tricky, but this particular crackle medium I've found is my favourite of all. I know you can get away with using PVA glue and things like that, but uh, this really makes some decent uniform crackling. Um, it's the favourite, my favourite one I've ever used. So it is coming into the Fluid Art Co. Should be here any day now. Might even be in some locations by the time this video airs. If not, just keep a lookout um, because as soon as that's in stock, I will go over it with a fine tooth comb and give you guys all the ins and outs of, of using this particular product, which I think is quite different to, to the others. Um, so as you can see, it's I really wish it was this fast in real life, but yeah, I am moving quite quickly, even in real time. I'm trying to get that crackle on. I'm trying not to go over the same spot more than once with it. Um, and I'm also trying not to drop anything in it because I don't really have any chances to fix small parts. Once you start, you kind of have to commit and just get it all on there and, um, and get it under the cover to dry. So I'm still trying to work out what to do with this hole. Not sure if I'm going to try and get it to crackle on inside that hole. I don't think it's going to crack at this stage. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to just give it a nice slick coat of white in there. Um, yeah, so I'm just cleaning up the roses. Um, I did a little bit of touching up with some more black paint just along the crackle line there. Not on all the places, but just on some places where the white did bleed in like a little bit. Um, I had to, to touch that up with the, my terribly amazing paintbrush skills, which actually I'm quite proud of my paintbrushing skills. It's, it's definitely not perfect, but it's clean enough for me. I feel like it's not really out of the lines too much. Um, yeah, so that wraps up all of the pieces now hopefully you've had the chance to watch all of the videos um, before this one if you are interested in bidding on any of these artworks in the collaboration you can do so by heading to octria.events forward slash piggy love 2023 you'll just need to register an account there fill in a couple of little spots and you'll be able to place your bids it starts on the 12th of february at 12 p.m gmt minus five which is Canada time so that'll be at the start of Lisa Marvin Arts premiere video and it will end on February the 14th Valentine's Day at 11 p.m GMT minus five Toronto time again so yeah pretty easy to just register an account and um, get yourself all set up and ready to bid when the time comes as a final wrap up I'd just like to thank all of the artists for dropping everything and contributing their time and also donating their, their beautiful piece um, to this wonderful cause for the piggies in need. Um, so thank you guys. Also Fluid Art Co, um, thanks for organising the hearts, shipping them all around the globe. Thanks Lainey and Billy and everybody at Fluid Art Co um, as well for putting this together. Um, I know that the, the wonderful team at Where Pigs Fly are super appreciative um, of us reaching out to them to join us in this little um, fundraiser. So yeah, I've had a great time making my love heart and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And yeah, I will be seeing you next time. Bye for now.